today I'd like to talk about the notion of English as an international language. It's a term you've probably heard, and it's a different way of thinking about the role of English in the world today. In the past, we used to think of English as being the property of the English-speaking countries. In other words, you spoke British English if you were in Britain, and American English if you were in North America, and so on. These days, however, English has become a world commodity. It belongs to anybody who wishes to learn it and use it. It doesn't belong to the traditional homeland countries where English is spoken. And for this reason, the term English as an international language is increasingly being used. Um, when we talk of English as an international language, we might be thinking of English as is spoken by Germans speaking to French-speaking people, by Chinese businessmen speaking to Japanese uh, counterparts, by Brazilians speaking to Mexicans, and so on. In other words, the the parties involved may both be learners of English as a second language or users of English as a second language. And so when English is thought about in these contexts, it's not so important that we imagine that we're learning English in order to understand and identify with the culture of the United States or the culture of Britain or the culture of Australia or whatever. In other words, English has become more of a neutral commodity, detached, if you like, from its historical um, homeland, if you like, and become something that anybody can use according to their needs and circumstances. Uh, many people, I think, uh, these days feel also when they're learning English that they don't necessarily need to master English as it's spoken by an American or an Australian or a Brit. Because the way you use a language, the way you speak a language, reflects your cultural identity. And so you may be quite comfortable speaking English with a Japanese accent or a Mexican accent or a French accent. Because after all, that helps uh, identify who you are. It's not everybody, of course, who, uh, who will adopt this attitude. Some people may want to speak English in a way which is uh, very close to that spoken by native speakers, but that's a question of personal choice. So when we think of English as an international language, we're thinking about the, the way English has spread around the world, the fact that it's become an international commodity, if you like, used by different people in different ways according to their own needs and circumstances. And this raises implications for teaching. We want our students to hear these different varieties of English, to be comfortable using English um, as, they, as they do with the kind of fluency that they feel comfortable with and not to feel that they are, have failed to learn English simply because they use English with a local pronunciation and some features that may be transferred from their mother tongue. Um, so in teaching then, we need to be careful in terms of uh, our attitudes towards the kind of English our students hear and the kind of English our students produce. Let's be more flexible, let's be more tolerant, um, let's uh, acknowledge the fact that English is an international language and can be used by different people according to the circumstances and the purposes for which they need it.